This is a science mission on par with Apollo missions, Space Shuttle, International Space Station, and Hubble missions. For nearly two decades, thousands of people around the world, many have spent their entire careers, built the James Webb Space Telescope. And it all comes down to this. Once we launch the James Webb Space Telescope, there are no second chances. We have 300 single point failure items, and they all have to work right. When you're a million miles away from the Earth, you can't send someone to fix it. We've never put a telescope this large in space. We want to see distant parts of the universe humans have never seen before. Looking back in time almost 14 billion years to see the first galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. And we want to search for the building blocks of life in the atmospheres of planets orbiting distant stars. To unfold the history of the universe, we must first unfold this telescope. This is the largest primary mirror, the largest sun shield, and the most powerful space telescope ever built. And yet, this large telescope needs to fit inside a 5.4 meter diameter rocket fairing. That's the largest fairing size available on any rocket, and it's the fairing size on our ride to space. The Arian 5, provided by the European Space Agency, is one of the world's most powerful rockets. To cheat the fairing size limit, we built Webb to fold, like origami, to fit inside the rocket fairing. And this brings us to our most challenging part of this mission, unfolding it in space. This thing got... Think of what you're doing. You're taking this extraordinarily delicate, precise, state-of-the-art scientific instrument, you're slapping it on a rocket, and for the next eight minutes, the explosion from that rocket is following you into outer space. Vibrating you. Shaking you. Everything that goes into outer space has to live through this environment and work once it gets there without having someone come to fix it. Two weeks. That's how long it will take to fully deploy the Webb telescope. We can take longer if we need to, but those two weeks after launch are going to be nail biters. This is the Mission Operations Center at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. Those two weeks after launch will be like our Super Bowl, World Cup, you pick the analogy. Years of training comes down to these moments. The Webb Observatory has 50 major deployments, 50 depending on how you categorize them, and 178 release mechanisms must work to deploy those 50 parts. Every single one of them must work. Unfolding Webb is hands down the most complicated spacecraft activity we've ever done. Then again, nothing about Webb is easy. We've never done any of this before. There's nothing simple about sending anything into space. You can't do it without taking risks. This mission is squarely in new spacecraft territory. Webb is the perfect example of science desire driving engineering capability to new frontiers. Webb's unique design was born from reasoned engineering to accomplish its science goals. Here's the plan. Shortly after launch, we unfold Webb's solar panel for power and our Huygen antenna for communication. About 12 hours later, we have an important engine firing that sends Webb on the proper course towards its orbital destination, about a million miles away. That's where Webb will do its science. Webb will be moving so fast, it passes the moon's orbit in one and a half days, half the time it took Apollo astronauts to reach lunar orbit. First, we lower the sun shield pallet, then raise Webb's primary mirror and instruments away from the sun shield. The solar wind will push us around with the sunshield open, so we'll unfold a trim tab to help keep us stable. 
we got these huge, iconic, golded segmented mirrors that will help us deliver amazing new images from the cosmos. But in some ways, the sun shield is a lot more complicated and it's just as essential. Without it, nothing works. Here we've got five sun shield layers, of approximately 8,900 square feet, almost the size of three tennis courts, a very thin Kapton material, about one to two thousandths of an inch thick. Making them go where you want them to go in zero G is extremely challenging. The sun shield shades the telescope from the heat of the sun, earth, and moon. The concept is simple, but there is nothing simple about the design or operation, especially when you get to space. Webb's sun shield assembly includes 140 release mechanisms, approximately 70 hinge assemblies, eight deployment motors, bearings, springs, gears, about 400 pulleys, and 90 cables, totaling 1,312 feet. All this just to keep the sun shield under control as it unfolds. First, we release these special restraints that protect the sun shield during launch. They roll out of the way, but not all the way until we are ready to deploy a side. Next, we release a set of covers over the core region. Now comes the critical point. All 107 sun shield release mechanisms need to fire on cue. 107. They free the five sun shield layers, allowing them to extend as the mid-booms deploy. Until fully deployed, we start setting up the optics. First, the secondary mirror is extended and locked into place. And a special radiator behind Webb is extended, which helps further lower the temperature of the science instruments. Finally, we open the primary mirror's wings and lock them in place. With that done, Webb is in its final configuration, but we're not done yet. After 47 deployments, and accomplishing the hardest spacecraft unfolding NASA has ever done, Webb still won't be ready for science. While the instruments cool, we'll control motors behind each of Webb's 18 mirror segments, the secondary mirror, and the fine steering mirror, located inside the center of the primary mirror. We'll precisely align the mirror segments to form a perfect mirror. Then, Webb will be ready to explore the cosmos.